Uh, good evening and welcome all. My name is Vijay Mehta and I'm the chair of Uniting for Peace. I'm pleased to see you all, dedicated peace and development activists. All of you are driving force behind social change in our world. It's an honor to have Sir Richard Jolly with us today as our keynote speaker. And I don't know if Lord Fred Judge is at the moment, who's going to respond to uh, Sir Richard's action. And equal honor, Rita Payne, to be our chair this evening of the annual Erskine Children's Lecture. The lectures are a tradition which have been delivered by eminent politicians, academics, and diplomats. The first one was in 1997 by the then president of the UN General Assembly, Ismail Razali, ambassador of Malaysia. These are compiled in a book, The UN and Its Future in the 21st Century, which is available here today on that table. The lectures are held and annually in honor of Erskine Childers, a UN free thinker, critic, and constructive analyst. He was a man with few illusions <coughs> about UN flaws, shortcomings, and its need for reforms. Nonetheless, he remained to the end a dedicated servant of the organization's founding ideals. He was a colleague of Sir Richard, and they worked together at the UN. Let me convey a greeting for Marjolaine, Erskine's and, the, and David, Erskine's partner and son, who currently live in Netherlands and are not, are not able to join us today. You'll be pleased to know that Dad Hammersham Foundation of Sweden, in partnership with our organization, is publishing a book in 2011, which is a collection of Erskine's children and lectures under the title for a democratic United Nations and rule of law. With comments from eminent people as a commemoration of special issue to coincide with the 50th year of Dad Hammarskjöld's passing away. Allow me to say a few words about our organization, United for Peace. It is an amalgamation of Action for UN Renewal and World Disarmament Campaign. These two vibrant organizations have been around for decades working on the most intractable <coughs> problems, challenges that directly or indirectly affect us all. Issues such as poverty reduction and international development, peace and security, general and complete disarmament, protection of human rights and rule of law, a strong and credible United Nations. We are here to inform and generate public understanding. There are books and literature on the tables at the back. There's Pluto Fest and over, over there our literature. So you are free to take them and books of sale. Uh, and we like uh, our organization is a volunteer organization and we like you to donate as generously as you are. Two dates for your dying. One, the 21st of July, at 6.30 p.m. at the Amnesty International Center in London. And the topic we are discussing that evening is defending the rights of the child and fear the children. The second one is on 19th of November, a conference in the Houses of Parliament, Lord's Room 4A. The title for that is, After the Election, New Rule for Britain in the World. The topic of today's discussion or meeting is inequality and millennium development goals. It's an important one for the simple reason everybody's talking about it and also there is a big conference and a debate in New York in September. In, in the 21st century, in the midst of plenty, people should not die of hunger or disease and deny the right to education and better learn how. Trillions of dollars were spent on bailing out the banks, while staggering shortfall of funds remains a reality. So that's what we are discussing in today's meeting, strategies and solutions for the completion of Millennium Development Goals. Without further delay, I'm now going to pass on to our chairperson for today, Rita Payne, former BBC World's Asia editor, and now chair, Commonwealth Journalists Association for starting the evening. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Rita Pei. Thank you very much, Vijay. And I think thank you all very much for coming. Um, we're sort of privileged this evening, of course, to have with us <coughs> Sir Richard Trotty, a former Assistant General to the United Nations and co-director... Well, secretary. Yeah, right, that's fine with all the... Second. Uh -huh. Is it Salmon's? No? Back there again? Okay. Okay. So, former Assistant Secretary. Secretary General. Secretary General. So forgive me, so here we are, we will start now, <laughs> the former Assistant Secretary General to the United Nations and co-director of the UN Intellectual History Project. And the subject of this lecture is Inequality and the Millennium Development Goals. So after Sir Richard, we will hopefully hear from Lord Judge, um, who I'm sure is on his way, and then from Vijay Mehta. And just a quick reminder, that um, about the Millennium Development Goals. In 2000, world leaders agreed on a set of goals to be reached by 2015 for slashing poverty, hunger, disease, maternal and child death, and for improving the environment, education, and gender equality. However, in the last few years, progress towards the Millennium Development Goals has been set back by complex global crises economic, financial, environmental, and agricultural, which have put the development agenda on the back burner, with the result that many more people are living in extreme poverty and are vulnerable to hunger and disease. It has led to a serious setback and shortfall in the funding for the completion of the MDGs. So I will now hand you over to Sir Richard Jolly, who was in Istanbul only last week for a conference um, on the MDGs with all the UN agencies and some countries concerned. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Sir Richard Johnson. Thank you one and everyone, and thank you for that nice introduction. BJ, thank you for the invitation. Thank you Carl, Carl Miller, wherever Carl Miller is, who I gather had some hand in making sure inequality was written large into the topic for this evening. And uh, this actually is the first time I've uh, spoken in the in Friends House, so it's a particular honor to be here. And thank you, many friends, for being here. I hope to give a good introduction. Uh, I hope the Frank Judge, as well as BJ, will then give us a lead for what I hope we have time for a good discussion on this thing. Let me first say a word about Erskine Childers, whom we knew well, Alison, my wife, and myself. He lived where we lived in Rose on Roosevelt Island in New York. Erskine made his mark in many places and many situations. He had a reputation for telling it as it is, with frankness, wit, and often humor, especially disrespectful humor. He made many contributions to UNDP, to the UN more generally. Frank, wonderful that you're here. And all I'm doing is just saying a few words about Erskine. My um, Frank Erskine made many contributions to UNDP and the UN more generally. Uh, he was passionate about the UN about his beloved island, and in the world he went, wherever he went. He used his professional skills and journalistic nose to souse out where there was a story to be followed up, issues to be brought forward, mistakes to be exposed, and errors to put right. And after that, he did not hold back, but told it as it is. Tonight I want to try to do the same, ignoring the handicaps I have as an economist and as a professor. <laughs> I hope if I do go too far in any of those, you will just correct me, particularly in the discussion afterwards. I want to avoid the economist's two-handed approach to complexity and the professor's tendency to take an hour to say the obvious. I want to tell it is as I see it and feel it. The levels of inequality in the world today are a scandal, slowing progress towards the MDGs and creating many other forms 
of unhappiness and social unrest. However, with a range of actions in developing and in developed countries, much can be done. And a number of countries have already been taking them, as I will bring out. 